Edward, welcome to the community map class. Um, thanks for getting up early to join me. Um, most of you already know that this is recorded and it heads to our National Pilates Training YouTube channel. So that means you can practice as often as you like with me. There's already about 30 to 40 classes there. They all sit in the territory of fundamentals. So we unpack them a little bit differently each week. Uh, try to give us time and space to study the breathing, just those aspects of the Pilates methods that are often really tricky to get your head around in a full Pilates class, which tends to flow. So we break it down. We put space in between. And one of the things I love to teach is breathing. So it's finding new ways to help you access the breath, to help you understand the breath in your body, and then to get the time to actually be able to practice the coordination of breath with movement, which I don't know how you feel. I still find that tricky. Um, 30 years down the track in my own personal Pilates practice, that's one thing I still find really challenging. And as the body ages and changes, there's always something new to learn about it. So enjoy. So we're going to start with breathing. We'll meet you on your back. Have a lovely time. No props this morning. Just checking, I usually look at Sarah, my sound check. Can you hear me when I go back to the mat? All good, thank you so much. Here we go. So all of you, please feel free. I don't usually put a cushion underneath my head, but for some of you, that's really important. So if you feel very tight in your throat when we lie down now and very tight in your middle back, your very best solution is to put a little pillow underneath your head right now. Okay, you're joining me. You're sitting your fingertips on your sternum. And just having a little moment to rest with me. So noticing all your weight spots. Back of the head. Back of your pelvis. Your whole back, your feet, the weight of your shoulders, whole upper torso, your arms, your hands resting on your sternum. It's like a giving over to the floor. And now within this rest, notice your breath. So where can you feel it in your body? The rise and fall. Tempting to change it. Tempting to coach it. Try not. You'll notice it has its own tempo and rhythm. So you're just observing that. Now this next section is called sensory attunement. So you're just bringing yourself into your sense of sound. What can you hear in your room? Honing in, fully immersing yourself in the sound of my voice, the rise and fall, my intonation, And then now, what can you hear outside your room? 
zero in. Notice your breath. Now using your sense of touch, bring your awareness into the feet and how the contact you're making with the floor makes your skin feel. Into the palms of your hands. And as they're sitting on your chest, contacting your clothing, bring awareness using your sense of touch, how does your skin feel as it makes contact with your clothing? Now all the contact points, the places where your body is touching the mat, Some parts are in contact with clothing, then floor, maybe a mat first. So you're experiencing sensation through your skin, which is increasing awareness. And a big word that comes up right now is proprioception. You have lots of little proprioceptors that live in your skin. Those proprioceptors help us orientate through the world, help us understand ourselves, help us connect to the environment. Now think taste, so dive into the mouth and just notice the saliva in your mouth and it's like you're tasting something. You're just sitting there for a minute. At the same time, smell your favorite coffee, food, anything you like. Take a deep breath in. Opening up the nostrils, the sinuses, really filling the face, the nose, the throat, and a nice long slow exhale. Encouraging your breath to be rich and full, bringing all of you to the practice of breathing. Let's do three more together. We often find through life that the ability to breathe in deeply through your nose with your mouth closed is hard and we don't actually get a time to practice it very often. Most of us are mouth breathers. So here's your moment. Free Botox for your face and your neck. Healthy Botox. Notice how much fuller the breath is when you actively encourage the nostrils the sinuses and all your neck and chest muscles to support the intake of air. Rib cage feels like a big piano accordion. Your whole upper torso is separating from your lower torso. And then the slow recoil, the collapse of the lungs, the softening of the ribs, 
the emptying of the lungs. Try and wait until all the air's gone before you kick in again. Can you control the speed? So the ribs are moving slowly. The lungs are gradually filling up. And try a little hover at the top of your inhale now. So just suspend. Mouth still closed. Just a couple of beats. And then really slowly exhale. Now with your fingertips on your sternum, keep practicing and become aware of the movement. So as you breathe in, the sternum is tipping up, away and forward. So you're gaining space between your chest and your back. As you exhale, notice the inward pull of the sternum. So as the lungs contract, and you're squeezing all the air out to get the empty lungs, notice the inward pull of your sternum. So your hands and fingers are simply there to follow and give you feedback. Two more. Last practice, deliberately slowing down, deliberately quietening the mind. Okay, let's flip over on our body. Same, same, but different. Resting your head on your hands. Same intention to keep yourself fully immersed in the practice of breathing. And your focus is on the movement of the sternum. Gradually, slowly breathe in. When you feel like you hit the top of your inhale, just hover. Remember your mouth is closed. And then a long, slow exhale. Deliberately slowing down. Keeping your attention on the sensations you're feeling in your body, you're following the breath. See your torso as a balloon, watch it fill. On your exhale, watch the balloon collapse. Past practice.
sitting back in child pose, rest position, creeping your fingertips forward, stay in the zone, keep your attention on the breath, very different feeling. You'll mainly be noticing the sensation of breath in the back of your mouth. Enjoy. Your intention is the same. Slow uptake. Reach your full potential. Couple of beats at the top. Mouth closed. Deliberately slowing down. Last practice. Flipping over on your side. Knees stacked, feet stacked, pelvises, shoulders, unlengthened and long. Famously called one lung breathing, linking right back to Eve Gentry, who was one of the original Pilates teachers that worked with Joe. So top hand is resting on your top rib cage as high as you can get your hand towards your armpit and it's sitting on the top. Now rest into the shape. So feel yourself collapse. Underside of the torso falls. Feel your weight through the underside of your torso. Same intention, long, slow, steady breath in, mouth closed. As you're breathing in, feel yourself shifting up into this top hand. The space between your pelvis and armpit will open up. You'll feel your pelvis shifting out of the road. You'll feel this top side opening up and you'll feel this underside picking up. Nice, long, slow, steady exhale. Acting like a slinky. Didn't you love those? So allowing your whole spine to be involved. There'll be movement in your spine. There'll be movement in your pelvis. The focus is on filling the top lung. You'll be using both. But that famous title, One Lung Breathing, really shifts your attention into the top lung, really Sensing the energy, feel this top lung, stretching the rib cage, opening up the side body. At the same time, the breath is flowing. There's no sudden sharp. No commas, no full stop. No exclamation mark. Last practice.
and rest. So as we practice the second side, the good thing for our brain is understanding that this coordination, this practice in this position is getting us ready for everything we do in the sideline position. Any side bends, any sideline activities, we're already practicing the coordination, the movement pattern. Here we go, mouth closed, long, slow, and steady. As you breathe in and maximally fill your lungs and exercise your diaphragm. Uncomfortable pause at the top. Long, slow, steady exhale. Uncomfortable pause at the bottom. Don't know about you, but I'm getting lots of gurgling, which is really exciting because that says this simple exercise is affecting my digestive system. Last practice. Good. Coming up now, sitting cross legs. Now starting to shift into posture lateral breathing to get us ready for the Pilates class. So would you like to just gently shape your back into a round position? So I'm imprinted in the pelvis. I'm thinking like I do when I do round positions like the hundreds, like roll like a ball like roll down, like spine stretch, like roll up. My back is in curves, flexion. Now I'm going to draw my abdominals in. And now I'm going to practice breathing in and breathing out, keeping the abdominal tension on. So I'm going to shift my focus of breath now into my back and sides. Have a practice with me, breathing in. And a deep exhale. Can you feel your abdominals drawing in and deepening? Really helping you open up your back. Try to keep the abdominals. Try to keep the tension on the abdominals as you breathe in. And shift your focus and intention posteriorly into the back body, into the back bottom side ribs. And then really actively squeeze the air out of the lungs so you're empty again and you should feel maximum abdominal compression. Three to go. Okay, it gets a little more fun. So, same, same, except much more loaded. So I'm in the start position for roll like a ball. So I'm actively pushing my knees out 
and then wrapping my arms around so my knees have got something to push against. I'm actively squeezing my feet together. Be ready. It's quite tiring. I'm curling up into my chest lift position, but I'm also tucking and lifting my bottom up, which is exactly the position I'll get into in Roll Like a Ball, which I don't know about you is one of the hardest Pilates exercises outside the hundreds and the roll up and the roll over and my lift could keep going. All right, you and I are on a mission now to get that breath into the back and sides, but keep maximal tension on the abdominal. Good luck, we have six practices. Eye on your belly. Careful, it shouldn't be rising. You'll feel the air fill, but be careful. Watch the abdominals. Can you keep the tension on? Are you still pushing your legs out against your arm? Are you still squeezing your feet together? Okay, rest. Whew. Okay, now your next one is percussive breathing. So your next one is really understanding the hundreds before we get into a Pilates class. Such a great exercise. And it teaches us such a lot about abdominal support, strength, endurance, but also the breathing. So I've got my feet resting on my couch. Is there somewhere at home right now in your lounge room that you could use like a little footstool. My legs are gonna be active, so I'm actively squeezing my legs together. I can feel my inside thighs, I can feel my whole leg, I can feel the tone. So I'm actually pushing down into my couch. Okay, so you all know the hundreds. You've got to breathe in and pump out for five, and you've got to breathe out and pump out for five. It's a pumping action. It's a pulling action, purposely built to stimulate, to create energy, to promote abdominal endurance. Remember, breath, back and sides. Good luck. We have 10 sets. Sniff for five. And then a little H in front of every pump on your exhale. Sniff for five, get that, that air up into your sinuses and your nostrils and then squeeze it out with a forceful H. Keep practicing, watch that abdominal wall. Remember, you've got to keep compression on it. You've got to keep tension on it. You've got to push that breath to your back and sides, really open up your back. Three sets to go. Check legs. And rest. Well done, everybody. Daily practice of the hundreds, yes? Okay, good. All right, now we practice coordination of breath with movement. We've got everything we need. So our first little practice here is a bridge, not a pelvic curl yet. So you're actively thinking long, tippy crown of the head, tippy point of the crown of the head reaching back, then sense the length of your spine and send a message to your tail, to your coccyx, to reach forward in opposition. My feet are just out from underneath my knees. On my next inhale, I'm going to raise the pelvis up. Still breathing in, still breathing in, still breathing in. Now I'm going to slowly exhale. Breathing out, breathing out, breathing out, breathing out, breathing out. Now you understand why we practice breathing so slowly. Breathing in. Careful, there's no snatch on the breath. Soft throat, breathing out.
focus on the knees, moving away from the sternum as you breathe in. The spine feels long, it feels stick-like. You've all heard of the word neutral. No tuck. What should land on the floor first? The back of your pelvis, not your lower back. Catch yourself out. Can you float us up in neutral? No change through the spinal column. So the action is pivoting around your hip. Tricky. Two to go. Deliberate practice. Stick with the slow. Keep sending the long message. Could you gain any more length through your spine as you're raising your pelvis up? Could you move your knees further forward away from your sternum? Okay, I'm going to meet you at the top on the next one. Connect the breath before you move. Sense it. Now we're at the top of our bridge. Tune into the alignment of your legs. So just double check your knees are tracking forward. Tune into your feet. Even weight. Underneath the big toe mound, little toe mound, you're in the center of the heel pad. You can feel all the tippy toes. Most of your weight right now is in your heel. Lift those pelvises up a little higher. You're going to slowly pull us forward towards your feet. Not from your shoulders, but from your feet. So you're pulling the pelvis is moving ever so slightly. You've still got your hands and arms in contact. Minimal movement to your head. Lots of work for the legs. Check your height. You've got to maintain your height. Three to go. Control the lowering down. Take your time, think long, no tuck. Think long, no tuck, think long. Good, so you're gonna spin around. You're gonna use that couch again. So we're gonna do same, same, but straight legs. All of these activities are then transferable across to the Pilates studio. So we rely on this understanding of neutral pelvis and neutral spine, dynamic stabilization in lots of activities we do. Okay, same, same, but different. So now my legs are active. I'm actively pushing down onto my couch and I'm drawing my legs together. So be careful your legs don't rest. Think tone. Good, I'm taking the floor with my palms. I've got two straight arms, two long arms. Be careful your elbows are not resting on the ground. Use the moment to tone those triceps. I'm gonna sense my breath first. And then without losing the shape, I'm going to float the pelvis up. And then slowly float it down. You've got to take the spine as a piece. Think like a tube, think like a cylinder. Breathing in, float your tube or cylinder up. How far can you go without letting your feet fall out? Squeeze them together, slowly float down. Okay, now get back to script with breath. Inhale.
Now be careful, use your intelligence. Remember there's maximal tension on those abdominals before you kick in. Last one. Good job and rest. Okay. Suitably warmed up in the back chain of my body. Suitably feeling a little taller than five foot two. As I head across the end of my week, that's always exciting. Okay, could you make me side line? Very tricky position. Lying on the very narrow edge of our torso and aiming to challenge our stability in this position. Reaching those arms overhead, encouraging the length. So how tall can you feel right now? Fingertips reaching away. Back tippy point of the crown of the head reaching away and the spine, the length of the spine, the coccyx, the tail. Toning up those legs, so fully engaging your legs, squeezing the legs together using your inner thighs. Okay, good luck. You're going to breathe in to float both legs. Deceivingly difficult. You're going to breathe out to touch them down. No reps. You're going to breathe in. Good. Now bring your awareness into the spine. Remember the column. So there shouldn't be any change in the column. So without throwing your weight back in either your middle back or your pelvis. Inhale. Touch down, exhale. Promote the length. You'll notice how much easier it is to get your leg off the floor, your legs off the floor, if you go for maximal elongation. Two more. Are you sensing your spine? The entire back. From the tippy point of your tail all the way through to the tippy point of your head. Can you feel how your neck relates to your lower back and your lower back relates to your neck? Can you keep awareness between your thoracic and your sacrum? Last one. Gets even more fun. Little scissor type action. Close them together. Other way, little scissor type action. Close them together. Now careful you're not kicking a ball. So it's a whole leg, log-like leg. You move from the hip. Inhale. Exhale. Can you make those legs any longer? Inhale. Exhale, go on, really tone them up. Inhale, exhale. Good, now double check. Remember you're not allowed to translate back or forward in the spine, in the pelvis. Dig deep. Last one. Rest, good job, second side. So these are all the basics. If we can get the basics right, getting to a traditional classical Pilates class becomes really exciting and fun. But we've got to understand ourselves enough before that success comes. Remember, fully outstretched, bean pole, stick like long, energy really traveling through your whole system. Stretch those legs fully. Really stretch your arms and open up your armpits and you want both armpits facing front, just like both pelvises, hips facing front. Prepare, notice your breath. Sense where you are in space. 
You're your own teacher. Deliberately pay attention to the breath, to the feelings and the learnings you're getting in the spine and the pelvis. Two to go. Pause, scissors, in, inhale, separate, exhale, close, take your time, deliberately monitor the speed at a beginner level, giving yourself space and time to experience, to understand, to bring awareness. The breaths are full, but remember maximal tension on the abdominals. So where are you going to be biasing that breath? Into your back and sides. Last one. And rest. Good job. Spinning over on your tummy. The hardest so far this morning. So reaching our arms back by our sides, palms up. Your step one practice is just to pick up the shoulder off the floor, spread your collarbones apart, Feel your shoulder blades wrap around your side trunk. Raise your arms up and fully stretch your arms. Hold it 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Lower the arms down. Let's go again. Notice your breath. Pick up the shoulders as you notice your breath. Stretch two arms. Float them up. Now you're doing long, slow, steady breaths in and breaths out with maximal tension on your abdominals. Fully stretch your legs. Press down into the tops of your feet to help you fully stretch your legs. Nearly there. Two more breaths. Now we're going to add the same prep. Pick up place and set the shoulder. Without hardening your armpit, raise the two arms off the floor. Stretch those arms fully. Now hover your face and head. So you're very low. You can almost kiss your mat. You're lengthening. So you're actively breathing, but trying to get a little longer. A little more space. Really fully stretch those legs and push those feet down into the floor. Practice your breathing. Maintaining abdominal support and control. Two more cycles. Rest. We have one more practice. Deceivingly difficult, deceivingly stressful. Pick up place and set the shoulder. Raise those arms, fully stretch them. Check out your elbows, fully stretch them. Without hardening your armpit, float your face, your head. Think long. Tippy back point of the crown of the head, reaching forward. Check out your legs. Push off the tops of your feet and fully stretch the legs and tone them up. Breathing is long, steady and slow. 
maximal tension on your abdominals. Feel like a dart. So that's an energetic cue. Lower down, sitting back into child pose. Okay, we're planking. So to finish off our class this morning, now we're going to set up on the elbows, two feet squeezing together. Think like a table. So all the focus this morning has been on the alignment of the spine and really bringing awareness to your own spine. So in the front support basic position, can you neutralize us? Are you running parallel to your floor? Don't forget your legs. Fully engage them and squeeze them together. Now you're going to push off the feet, traveling a little forward like a dart. Six. Careful. The spine, the alignment of the spine, are you still traveling parallel? Thick like spine. The spine doesn't change its curve. Rest. Have a little moment. The toughest thing about the plank is to keep your whole body, your whole system, your systems. It takes a lot of energy to get those legs firing up but it's preparing us for the vertical posture. So by the time we stand up, we want those legs and the feet to support us, less impact on our pelvis and spine as we shift through life. Return, part B. Engage, think long. Now pull us forward with your arms and shoulders and upper torso. Pull. Careful you're not pushing. Delay your feet. Pull. Return. Four to go. Stay strong. You're a container. Last one. Rest. Sitting back. All right. Up into full plank. So to prepare, you're on all fours. Set up the hand, open up the palm, and get the palm fully in contact with your mat. Spread your fingers and feel the length of your fingertips. Fingertips pressing into your floor. Most of your weight will come through your thumb and index side of your hand right now. Both arms are fully outstretched. Shift your weight onto the inside heads of your shoulder. So it feels like you're actively drawing your pecs and chests together. Set up the spine, running parallel to the floor. Strap yourself in. Reach the right leg back without sinking into the wrist. Take the floor. Okay, listen carefully. Without sinking into your wrists, take the second leg back. Legs are together. Actively squeeze them and breathe. Legs, legs, legs. Think long. Careful you're not letting the weight sink into your wrist. Good. Sitting back. Have a moment. All right, we've got one more to prepare us for standing. You ready? 
nearly there. Side plank low. Feet stacked. Should feel really ready for this. It shouldn't come as a shock. Hand behind your head. Okay, lift us up. Are you as long as you can make us? Maximal tension. Can you feel yourself in space? And can you work your legs? Breathe in. Rest. Second side. Nearly there. Dig deep. Here we go. Effort. Rest. Okay. Let's see how that's affected our vertical posture. Wrap your weight onto your feet. Prepare the foot. Spread all your toes. Can you get space between your toes like you've just had a manicure? Drop your weight onto your feet. Have a little moment. Check your feet out. Organize your feet. Pick up your arches. Check your alignment. Center of the heel. Underneath your big toe, little toe, that little tripod. Now, your foot needs to actively push. So the toes, the tips of the toes are pressing into the floor and the pads of the feet slowly unravel, keep sensing feet. Pads of the feet pushing, arches lifting. Unraveling, push off the feet. Engage the legs. Look up into your hands, see your ceiling. Keep looking up, can you feel your feet? Pads of the feet taking the floor, literally taking the floor. They need to push. Can you feel your legs? Just like we just did in side plank and front plank. Keep the tone in your legs, slowly open up your arms and have a moment with yourself in your vertical posture, eyes closed. The trick now is to not let your feet rest. The trick now is to not let your legs rest. So you should feel the energy traveling from the foot, shooting right up through the pins of your legs. They're setting up the straps, the foundation, so we can balance our pelvis. So then you bring the pelvis into the center. Careful your legs don't rest. Keep checking in with feet. Rib cage is floating, shoulders are floating, arms are suspending off the floating shoulders, floating rib cage. Organize the head. Can you balance it? On top of the spine. Feel the energy down through your back skin, all the way to your heels. Feel the energy up, rising up through your front skin, all the way through the front of your legs and hips, up through the abdominal wall, crossing over your sternum, your chest plate to find the center of your neck. Notice your breath. Gently open your eyes. 